Greetings everyone, welcome to the channel. In this season 27 Diablo 3 build guide video, we're going to be taking a look at a brand new monk set here. We've never shown it here on the channel and it is the Remnant of a Thousand Storms. So if you're looking for any of the gear shown in this video, it is being given away for absolutely free. All you need to do is hit that link in the description. Sign up for Discord if you're not already a member. Once you land in the Discord server, you are going to need to assign yourself a role. After that, you will have access to all of the Discord channels. The channel you're going to want to look for is the file downloads channel. There you will find a 20k paragon and a no paragon save for the season 27 free seasonal save file. But you will need either a jailbroken PS4 or save wizard to re-sign the save to your account. So yeah, um, but if you don't have any of those, feel free to enter in the free giveaway for one free save resign for the Season 27 save. So with all of that gone over, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right on into this build guide. So for our main weapon right here, we are picking up the first piece of the Shenlong's Spirit Fist Weapons, the Shenlong's Fist of Legend. This is dealing 9,388,804 damage per second with affixes that give you cold fire regular lightning poison holy percent damage percent attack speed percent critical hit chance percent critical hit damage life per hit and the augment for 750 dexterity you also get 9500 thorns damage it is infused with the gem of ease and also two soul shards the remnant of pain so yeah it's a pretty good weapon you're gonna get 8000 experience per kill it has the season 25 soul shard affix so when you kill an enemy you deal the damage done by the death blow to all enemies within 25 yards. Pets and followers cannot trigger this effect. It's a pretty good weapon right here. It also is sanctified. So the sanctified affix we chose is all way of the 100 fist combo punches use the second stage combo punch. Consecutive hits from way of the 100 fists increases its damage by 2%. Max 350 stacks. Holy shnikes. 61.2% for the reduced cooldown of all skills. 34.4% for that resource cost reduction, and 45% damage to the enemies. We do have the two-piece set bonus right here. The damage of your spirit generators is increased by 2% for each point of spirit you have. When reaching maximum spirit, all damage is increased by 350%, but you no longer passively regenerate spirit, and 65 spirit is drained every second until you run out of spirit. Z level 1 Primal Ancient Set Fist Weapon. Moving on to the first piece of the Remnant of a thousand storm set we do have the six piece set bonus no ring of royal grandeur needed so you can feel free to slot whatever you want in that jewelry slot in your cube affixes on this piece of gear are 5770 dex 130 to resist all elements 65 percent life 220 percent critical damage 14 percent critical chance 23,936 life per hit grant seven spirit per critical hit and you get 750 additional dexterity Thanks to the augment. You also get 70% gold from monsters and another season 25 soul shard affix which reads killing an elite enemy reduces all your active cooldowns by 5 seconds. 35.0% for the reduced cooldown of all skills. 27.7% for the resource cost reduction and chance to deal 24% area damage on hit. The shoulders are pretty much identical to the gloves, minus that Season 25 Soul Shard affix, so let's just move right on into the chest. This one has a higher dexterity value, coming in at 8,700, over 9,000 if you count the augment. Other than that though, pretty much identical to the shoulders and the gloves, so we'll move on to the helm. This one has three Soul Shards socketed into it, making it so potent and uh really really tacking on as many affixes as we can we got cold fire percent damage dexterity resist all elements percent attack speed percent life percent critical damage 10,000 life per second 24.0 percent critical chance 47,872 life per hit you also get that grant seven spirit per critical hit the augment for 750 dexterity 17,000 life after each kill, 38,000 life from health potions and globes. You get increased move speed after both killing an elite pack and picking up a health globe. And it's got a metric crap ton of season 25 soul shard affixes on there. Some of the good ones being killing an elite enemy pulls all enemies within 40 yards to where the elite died, which is super duper awesome. When you deal poison damage to an enemy, they receive 50% increased poison damage from all sources for 10 seconds which is a really, really, another really, really good one. 
and uh, you also get an additional rift progress orb when you kill an elite pack. 40.9% for the reduced cooldown of all skills, 46.8% for the reduced all resource costs, chance to deal 24% area damage on hit, and 45% damage to the enemies. Moving on into the amulet, this is a rare level 1 amulet, PvP amulet to be exact, buffing all main stats, you get 7000 regular damage, cold, fire, percent damage, percent attack speed, percent critical chance, life per hit, 100% damage to all monk skills, so it also ignores durability loss, and you get those same two movement speed increases as shown on the helm. Other than that though, this also has a metric crap ton of those season 25 soul shard affixes, so... We'll just kind of slowly scroll through them if you want to pause the video to take a look at them in greater detail by all means. So it's got a lot, trust me. 56.9% for the reduced cooldown of all skills, 46.8% for that resource cost reduction, 60% damage to the enemies, and that 25% movement speed bonus. Moving on into the offhand, these are the gun dungos gear, basically buffing our spirit generators. Your spirit generators reduce your damage taken by 60% for 3 seconds. I couldn't really find a pair of good bracers to put on for this build. I thought about using the Warsh and Arm Guards, but I meant, I don't know. This is the one they had on the maxroll.gg guide, so I just went with it. Other than that, though, it has 75% magic item find. Other than that, though, pretty much identical to all the rest of the gear, so let's move to the offhand. This is that second piece of the Shenlong Spirit. This is Shenlong's Relentless Assault, dealing 198,685.5 damage per second. With affixes for regular damage, cold, fire, percent damage, percent attack speed, percent life, percent critical hit damage, and percent critical hit chance, you also get life per hit, 70% gold from monsters, those same two movement speed increases as shown on the amulet and the helm, and it also has another sanctified affix, this one reads, casting wave of light, now summons a bell at the target location, that deals damage when any player attacks the bell, up to 5 bells can be active at one time. 41.5% for the reduced cooldown of all skills, 27.7% for the resource cost reduction, and 15% damage to the enemies. For the first rings, the test ring 516 for immortality, so you're never ever going to die while wearing this, it has 200% damage to all monk skills, gold health pickup radius is increased by 100 yards, you get those same two movement speed increases as shown on the amulet, the helm, and the bracers, or sorry, the offhand, my bad. Other than that though, Pretty much standard, it's got all the legendary gem bonuses, 34.4% for that reduced cooldown of all skills, and 56.9% for the resource cost reduction. For the second ring, this is the 1 billion physical skill damage ring. We're going to use this in conjuncture with the Stone of Jordan to net us some crazy elemental damage bonuses. Other than that, you get 200% damage to all monk skills. It's got a cold fire percent damage, regular damage, 6000 to dexterity, which is pretty nice. The same two movement speed increases, which is also very nice. The legendary gem bonuses, 71 or sorry, 77.1% for the reduced cooldown of all skills, 46.8% for the reduced all resource costs, chance to deal 144% area damage on hit, and you get a 35% chance to inflict bleed for 21,000 to 27,000 regular damage and 400% damage both over five seconds. Not too bad. Moving on to the boots, these are the second piece that features that 75% magic item find, bringing the grand total to 150%. Moving on into the pants, these have 10,000 dexterity, not counting the augment which is pretty crazy, other than that though, pretty much standard. Moving on into the belt, this is the sash of knives, you get 3 passives on this piece of gear, you get the seize the initiative, momentum, and determination passive, other than that though, 7,235 dex, a little bit of resist all elements, a little bit of percent life, and life per hit. Moving on into the skills. For our primary ability to take advantage of that sanctified affix on our main weapon, we are picking up Way of the Hundred Fists with the rune Fist of Fury. R2 to take advantage of that second sanctified affix, we're picking up Wave of Light with the rune Wall of Light. Square ability in the Focus Skill Tree, we're picking up Cyclone Strike with the rune Implosion. Triangle ability in the Technique skill tree, we're picking up Sweeping Wind with the Rune Fire Storm. Circle ability in the Focus skill tree, we're picking up Epiphany with the Rune Soothing Mist. And finally, for that Mobility skill in the Technique skill tree, we're picking up Dashing Strike with the Rune Quicksilver. Passives are as follows, Fleet Footed, The Guardian's Path, Beacon of Etar, and Exalted Soul. Q powers being Flesh Rake, Chow's Kin Gaze, and the Stone of Jordan Ring. 
quickly touching on Paragon, everything into Vitality for the core skill tree. For the ones you want to focus on first, on the offensive skill tree is going to be attack speed and uh, cooldown reduction. The, the, rest, the rest of these two are capped out. For the defensive stuff, you want to focus on life and armor first, then focus on resist all elements and life regen. For the utility skill tree, you want to focus on life per hit first, and then gold pickup radius, and then focus on resource cost reduction and area damage. For our follower, we are using the Enchantress, who is using the Cosmic Set. For the skills for the Enchantress, we are using Temporal Pulse, Prophetic Harmony, Powered Shield, Focus Mind, and we are using the token that allows our follower to not die, very crucial when pushing GR150s. Quickly going over the final numbers, then I'll wrap this video up with some gameplay. Our dexterity value is at 110,000, not too bad. Armor is pretty high at 141,000, so that's pretty good. Damage is right in that sweet spot at 368 billion. Damage increased by skills is showing a value at 20%. Bonus damage to elites is at 240%. Attack speed increase is showing a value at 21%. Critical chance and critical damage both capped at their respective values. Uh, area damage is at a huge, huge, huge value at 336%. Guys, say it with me. Cooldown reduction, 99.95%. Oh, we have baby. Okay, physical, fire, lightning, cold, and holy are all at 1 billion thanks to using the 1 billion physical skill damage ring and the Stone of Jordan, which is pretty awesome. Moving on down into the defensive stats, damage reduction is at 97.58%, with our resistances being a little low at 84%, but you don't have to worry about that because you're not going to take any damage. Thorns is at 9,500. Moving on down into the life stuff, total life bonus 585%. Life per second of 170,000. Life per kill, 17,000. Life per hit is at 287,000. Health globe healing bonus at 38,000. Bonus to gold slash globe radius at for 100 yards. Moving on down to the resource. Spirit cost reduction is at 99.63%. Movement speed is at 85% thanks to the soul shards and the passive. Gold find is at 525%. Magic find, 150% and bonus experience per kill set for 8,000. So with all of that gone over, let's go ahead and uh, jump into a GR150 so we can show this build in action. But before we do that, just gonna crank the uh, the volume down a little bit because it's about to get really loud, man. It's about to get real loud. So this build excels at using dashing strike because it refunds a, uh, a, a charge whenever you basically, Whenever you don't hit any enemies, can, which can be a lot if you're just using it to get mobility, to, you know, to get around the map. I don't know what the heck just happened there. Game is lagging so hard. But yeah, how you want to use this build though, is you want to use your dashing strike in conjunction with your X ability. These two both will teleport you. Um, your X ability is going to perform a short dash before finally attacking your enemy. And also, you want to ma mainly focus on using your X ability because it is using that Sanctified Affix to buff our Way of the Hundred Fists. So, um, yeah, basically very, very potent, but if you feel like you need more damage, you can start using your other abilities. I find this build really, really excels just using the, the Dashing Strike with the uh, with the X ability, but you can feel free to use your, um, your you know, wave of light you know stuff like that man like it, it's pretty potent it hits all the areas have adding that percent area damage on there really really makes a big difference because whenever you hit enemies that are grouped up together it's going to deal that damage to all enemies within 10 yards so if you got a big pack of enemies go ahead and you know use your wave of light to basically annihilate them and make them wish they were never ever born this uh this build is also very 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 mobile probably being one of the quickest monk builds we have here on the channel i think it's right up there with the lod monk the lod monk might be a little bit faster than this but it's going to be really really close you're going to be able to hit submit rifts i'm not going to guarantee that you're going to hit submit rifts every single time but a majority of your runs will probably be submit runs so if you're looking for a leaderboard pushing build this is definitely going to be the one you want to go for it's really really good with the follower because every time you hit a shrine or a pylon you're going to spawn enemy champions, which is great for trying to get those really, really, you know, those top leaderboard times that everybody wants. But, like, here we're going to, in this rift, we're going to demonstrate kind of just using the X ability in conjuncture with the dashing strike to kind of show how quick and how uh, deadly this build really, really is. Since you're using a spirit generator, our attack speed is getting increased, so 
I mean, yeah, it's 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 really really like wonky and awesome how quick you can move around, like how fast you can cast your dashing strike um, when using it with the uh, way of the hundred fist with that sanctified epics. I mean, having that teleport you along with uh, your dashing strike, it's really 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 broken, and it leads to some insanely fast uh, clear speeds. I mean, we're already on the fourth floor of the Crater Rift, and uh, it's literally been 45 seconds since we started, so. Yeah, very, very wonky, very crazy, very good at taking out pretty much every any single every single content in the game. You're gonna be able to handle it with ease using this build, and that can be said for a vast majority of the builds here. But you know, that's why I like modded gear. Uh, when you like when you play with modded gear, any build, any class can be the star of the show. I've said it multiple times in a lot of my videos, but it really hammers home the point of why we use mods is to have fun. Like, let's say you got a really, really bad build, like, without mods, you know? Like, uh, let's say, for example, the Gears of the Dreadlands for the Demon Hunter. Now, that build is so fun to play with mods, but if you play without mods, it, it's not going to do any damage. So, that's why I love mods, and I think it makes it even, like, more fun when everyone's enjoying the, uh, the gear. So, like, you know, that, it means a lot to me, seeing all the people on the leaderboards with uh, crazy leaderboard times running the gear that I made. It's really a sight to behold, and I absolutely love it. So we're going to continue to roll out updates here for the uh, the seasonal save. And like I said earlier in the video, if you don't have Save Wizard and you don't have a Jailbroken PS4 and you want to try this save out, then go ahead and enter in the giveaway. We got four winners every single week, so you know you could you could definitely win. Uh, we do have 1.5 thousand members in the Discord community. But um, a vast majority of those players, I think, already have Save Wizard or have a jailbroken PS4. So feel free to enter in that. Don't, you know, you, you might get lucky, like I said. And uh, other than that, though, there's not too much else I can say about how to rock this build. It's pretty much just using your dashing strike with your wall of light or uh, your uh, way of the 100 fists. It's pretty easy. We'll do uh, one more run here to kind of round out the... Uh, I'll round out the uh, number here. I think I, I couldn't remember if we did two or three. I think this is our third run. I think this is the third run. It's been pretty close on the times every single time, but we'll do one more just in case I can't remember if this is the second or the third run. Pretty sure this is the second one, but let's just do let's just do one more so you guys can kind of get a general idea for the for the rift times here. All of them have been pretty close to uh, that one minute mark to that sub minute mark. So this one will be the final one here, kind of give you guys an idea of what you guys can expect if you want to try this build out for yourself. Can be very potent, like I said it's very very mobile, probably one of the most mobile builds in the entire game, just allowing you to not even have to worry about like really any maintenance when it comes to this build. Like a lot of builds will have like a maintenance where you have to keep a certain skill active to kind of uh, keep your damage up like with a demon hunter. It's definitely Vengeance with the Rune side cannons. That's that's like pretty crucial on a lot of uh, Demon Hunter builds. But with this build, though, it completely takes all of that and uh, just amplifies it. You don't have to have, do anything besides dashing strike and hit them with your X ability. So if you want to try a very, if you're not very, you know, versatile with the monk, then I would definitely recommend this build to you because you're gonna have a good time and it's a lot of fun. I mean dashing striking everywhere and dealing crap tons of damage i don't think it's ever going to get old and with 100 yards to your gold health pickup radius you're going to be able to pick up those globes from super far away so like let's say you slaughter an enemy and you keep dashing striking and you know you're, you're like way far away you're still going to be able to pick up those globes so you can move at full speed without having to worry about going back and backtracking to pick up those globes so i think that's another plus to this build not too many negatives, the only thing I can really see is the resistances, but like I said, you know, you're not going to take any damage, and you have the test ring 516 for immortality, and on top of that, you got the uh, soul shard affix on your amulet to give you another boost of immortality, so definitely check this build out, it's a lot, a lot of fun, and I think y'all are going to enjoy it, so with that, man, Thank you all for watching. If you made it all the way till the end, you're an absolute legend. If you guys enjoyed this style of video and you want to see more like it, maybe drop a comment or maybe even a like. And finally, I'd ask if you're new here and you really, really like the content style of these videos and you want to see more just like it, maybe even consider hitting that subscribe button while you're down there. And with that, man, thank you again all for watching. I really hope to catch you all in another video coming out soon. Stay safe, stay happy, and last but not least, stay gaming, Lion Gaming Crew. I know.